This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whomever you are and whatever is happening on your journey of life, it is God who welcomes you here today, and so do we. We're so glad you're here. Any uh, visitors we have with us this morning, we invite you to take a moment and find one of the welcome cards and fill that out. You can place that in the offering plate as it comes by, and we will pray for you by name and contact you as you wish to be contacted. And those of you who are worshiping with us from home, we're so glad that you can join us. And we invite you to have some bread or wine, grape juice, crackers with you so that you can fully participate in Holy Communion with us. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is unity. And we thank you all for your ongoing support for the mission and ministry of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. We are going to begin, we begin our Advent season, Advent, a season of hope. We will begin with the traditional lighting of the candle, and I'm wondering, could you help us? Could you help us? If we could get one of our youth to help me light that first candle, that would be just great. Together, let's remember our mission, our mission, celebrating God's love and forgiveness. We serve others. We invite you now to stand as you wish and as you are able for our opening hymn, Creator of the Stars of Night. Blessed be the, the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from, from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just.
God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another in your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, and tender branch, a living sign, by water and the Holy Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray together. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening danger of our sins and enlighten our, way, our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit down. morning everyone happy Sunday today I'm gonna have a helper and today my helper is going to be Bob but let me help him out a little because I think he's a bit stuck Ah, good morning, everybody. I'm Bob, your tour guide today in the dark forest. So I'd like you to come and join me, and we'll uh, go for a walk. Okay, so let's join him. Shall we go this way? Yes, we can go this way. Here we are in the dark forest, very scary place. You can see many creatures around right here in front of us. What do you think? Are you scared? We walked a long walk, but this tour guide just runs. But why is he running? Ah, there's a bear behind us! What? And the tour guide did not tell us? <gasps> How dare he? Oh no, it can come back now, guys. Oh no, how dare he? Ah, oh, what a mean person, he was my tour guide. Well, he was our tour guide and then just left and tell us that there was no bear? Come on. How rude of him. And where did he even go? Oh, geez. Man, there's so many people like this. And for today's uh, sermon, it is called God is the Good Shepherd. So with this, as see, we had a little story. We had a little uh so, sort of play and who was the bad guy can anybody guess Bob was a bad guy he was our bad tourist because he did not tell us exactly that there was a bear and he just ran away so like that we've always been sometimes in problems like that and well I knew that the tour guide did not tell me about the bear and he just left me there all by my, all of us by ourselves. This is the same thing that God's people were going through. The tour guide represents the bad leaders. They didn't try to help the people out, but they left them defenseless. 
God, however, will not completely leave his people. There may be times where it feels like God is far away, but he is not. God may want us to learn something during those times of trouble, but he will never run away from us like the bad shepherd, like the tour guide that left us. Okay, so as we see, God never leaves us. He never leaves us like that bad guy that left us there with that bear. So that was our lesson for today, that God is always the good one. He always has us there, and he will never leave us. He will never run away. Okay, so I'm going to pray today. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful Sunday. Thank you for having these amazing kids and for having everyone here. Take care of all those kids and take care of all these people here at church. Thank you for teaching us once again that you'll never run away from us and that you'll always be here with us. Thank you, God, for everything you do. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please join me in the responsive reading of Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For the sake of my kindred and companions, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. The first reading today is from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, about that day and hour, no one knows. Neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until that day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too it will be with the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, the other left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. So in our confirmation curriculum, we are encouraged to start our lessons in a very interesting way. We're supposed to go around in the circle and talk about God sightings. I think we need to do that. Um, God sightings are, where did you notice in your watchfulness and in your paying attention that God showed up? 
And I really think that during this time of Advent, this season as we prepare for Christmas, that it would be a great time for us to take that on as a discipline ourselves, right? Look around and pay attention. Where does God show up? Be ready, be watchful to see where God appears. So let's think back about this last week. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you had a great time with family and friends. But as we know, as soon as you put humans together, things cannot go, sometimes go awry. It happens. But I wonder, is there a moment in your Thanksgiving time this last week that something unexpected and beautiful occurred? Was there a moment where you felt cared for? That help came from an unexpected place? Did that happen for anyone? Maybe better news than expected from a medical provider? An answer, guidance, or this is one that is definitely hallmark of God, peace in the midst of an unsettling time. Did anyone experience that? I know I did. We'll call those God sightings. And what a wonderful way to spend our Advent season as we are ready and watchful and looking, looking, looking for God to show up. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to Advent One, or should I say in the church year, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely, yes. In the church year, we are beginning the church calendar now because the church runs a little bit different than the rest of the world. Have you noticed that? But the question we really have is, what is this Advent really about? Advent normally, are you hearing me okay, Billy? A little louder? All right, I'm getting, I'm just uh, noticing around. If people have trouble hearing me, just do a little motion and I'll try to up the, up the volume a bit. What is Advent all about? Does anyone know what Advent is for? A new beginning, what? Preparation, right. And normally we would say this is preparation for Christmas, right? Trim the hearth, set the table, right? Buy the presents. Oh, remember to invite people to our Christmas pageant on the 18th and Christmas Eve services, right? Actually, no, that's not what Advent is about. It is about preparation, but not what one thinks. The person, the people who put together the church calendar well, they were very, very, very aware that Jesus has already been born and Jesus is not going to be born again. It's already happened. So what the season of Advent really is about is preparation for Jesus' second coming. Did you know that? You know, she, oh, Pastor Alicia knew that. She did very good studies. Yes, absolutely. No, Advent really is not about preparation for Christmas it is being watchful and ready for when Jesus comes again. So absolutely, what is Christmas about? Christmas is our chance to be in absolute dumbstruck awe that the God who created the stars of night, as we sang in that beautiful third century hymn, that was our opening hymn, the God who created the stars of night, the God who created the platypus, the God who created the Amazon basin, the God who cre is creating the ever-expanding universe, became an infant baby, completely helpless. What was God thinking? And to be in absolute, incomprehensible awe at the preciousness of this incredible gift of Jesus. That is what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. But Advent is about this time in between, this time between Jesus' resurrection and ascension, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus coming again. We are in this time, and Advent is preparing us and reminding us to be watchful and ready. Someone did a wonderful job of summarizing what this means in our Bible study. I'd love to have you come if you ever can, 3 o'clock on Zoom. But the readiness is to make sure our side of the street is clean. Are we living in forgiveness? Are we living in a place where we let go of resentments? Are we living in a place where we are doing our best to be of service to others? 
are we doing that now? And watchfulness, because there are always new threats against the message of Jesus out there, right? There have been throughout all the centuries, and there will continue to be new threats, new threats against Jesus' incredible inclusion, against forgiveness, against love. And these threats are almost always motivated by fear. If you scratch the surface, it's fear. So we're ready and preparing ourselves. We're being open to what God and the Holy Spirit want us to do, and we are watchful of what the threats are out there. Not surprised, never surprised, but watchful. But my friends, there is another beautiful way to be ready and watchful during this time of Advent, this time in between Jesus' ascension to heaven and Jesus coming again. And those, my friends, are the God sightings. This doesn't always have to be, although it seems in, in the Gospel of Matthew, which is our, our gospel for this entire church year, it seems like the way Jesus puts it is always in the sort of threatening negative, right? But the truth is we can look with joyful expectation to where God is showing up. And the beautiful thing about this is that we are told to expect Jesus to show up, to look for Jesus to show up, and to watch and then report back to others that once again, God showed up. Now this passage that we have today, has anybody read or heard the Left Behind series? Are you familiar with that? The one will be taken, the other left, right? Has anyone seen, and somebody else said this, pointed this out to me, in case of rapture, no one will be driving this car. Have you seen that bumper sticker, right? right. And so uh, passages like this are frequently thought of when we think of suddenly someone disappearing from our midst. In fact, I remember one time, I must have taken a nap, I must have been about seven or eight or nine, at least w aware enough of what this uh, whole rapture thing might be. And I woke up and no one was in the house. And I was convinced that Jesus had come again and he didn't take me, yes. I'm very, very glad to confront some of that theology because what is really being written here is the time the people first received the gospel of Matthew was a time the church was in great persecution. This is a time that the Romans would indeed come and take someone who was a follower of Jesus, who would not bow to Caesar or give in to the, uh, the demands of Rome, and they would disappear. One will be taken, the other left. One will be taken, the other left. Jesus is preparing us that the message of Jesus, the message of there is only one authority, and that authority is a loving God, it is not popular. Because when we really live into our Christianity of inclusion and caring for one another, and no one gets left out, no one gets left behind, that we do not make someone the black sheep of the, of the nation. We don't, we don't um, scapegoat people. That becomes a threat to the powers that be. Christianity is a threat to the status quo. And Jesus is saying, be prepared. Be prepared. We are in Matthew 24 this week. Very close to the end of Matthew. Matthew 25 are the last parables of Jesus, including the ones where Jesus says two things. One is, I will, the parable of giving the talents, I'm giving you talents, giving you abilities, use them well before the coming of the master again, right? Do you remember that parable? The one, the, the two, and the four talents. And the other parable of the sheep and the goats, where we do stand before Jesus, and Jesus says, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a prisoner, I was sick, you visited me, you advocated for me. I was a stranger, you welcomed me. What we have here in these Gospels is the ultimate, what God is calling us, what Jesus is calling us to do, and how Jesus is calling us to be the church in this time in between because Advent is all about preparing for Jesus' second coming. 
But again, my friends, one thing we know, that life following Jesus is so much better than life not following Jesus. Life following what God has put before us is the one that's worthwhile and purposeful. Everything else is sinking sand. But we can do this with joyful expectation. We can do this in community. So during this time of Advent, my friends, I put out this challenge or opportunity. Shall we do this? God sightings. Where does God show up? How do we know God is leading us? Look for it. Be watchful for it. Jesus comes to set us free so we can live in loving relationship with one another. And Advent is about saying, yes, Lord, I will look for you and I will find you. And when I see you, I will tell others. Advent truly is about the name that we use for God above all other names this season. And that is Emmanuel. God is with us. God is with you in the moments of your life of darkness and despair and frustration and fear. God is with you in community, showing up in a friend, peace, love, asking for help and receiving it. God is with you. Emmanuel. Look for Emmanuel. And when you see Emmanuel, say thank you. Amen. We invite you now to stand as you wish and as you are able for this Advent hymn, ancient Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Yeah. 
captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God shall come to you, O Israel. Please bow your heads, open your hearts, and join me in the prayers of intercession. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. We pray especially for all LGBTQ people who are looking for safe places to just live their lives. God, in your mercy. God of peace, you judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. We pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth. We pray for a hedge of protection around our police and fire department and all they serve. May they work and serve according to your will. God, in your mercy. God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who hunger, comfort the grieving, and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care. We pray especially for the recipients of our prayer quilts. Jenny, Julian, Karen, Julio, Joan, Chris, Emily, Mary Lou, Sherry, and Carrie. We offer continued prayers for Phyllis, Billy, Mick, Frank, and Carol, Omar, Chris, Chris, Ruby, Manuel, and for the families of St. Mark's. We ask, Heavenly Father, to surround each of these people in your all-encompassing love, giving them strength, courage, comfort, healing, and peace. God, in your mercy. God of community, you are present when we gather in your name. Guide congregations in transitions or conflict. We pray your blessing on our children and youth ministries and Lutheran social services, that they continue to help many and that those they reach may be blessed. Give wisdom to congregational councils, call committees, and ministry leaders. Keep us alert to unexpected opportunities for mission. God, in your mercy. Other prayers may be offered at this time, either out loud or silently in your hearts. God, in your mercy. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant, make me a 
servant. Make me a servant today. Gracious Lord, we pray your blessing on Jenny as she recovers from a bike accident for Mary Lou at the death of her husband. Gracious Lord, we pray that you will be with Joan, who is in the ICU with an allergic reaction. We pray for her doctors to find the ability to treat her so she can be healed. We pray that you will be with Julio during a time of great discouragement. And gracious Lord, for Julian, be with him, Lord. Give him guidance for the doctors, his family, and courage for him as he undergoes cancer treatment. Let us pray for Karen, who has severe, severe back pain. Um, that we will pray for the procedure that she's going through that will be successful to re, to in relieving the pain. Uh, we pray for we pray for Chris, uh, for guys, guidance and wisdom for for her doctors, and that the doctors find a treatment that completely eradicates her cancer. We pray for Emily as she mourns the death of her mother, Jenny. Uh, we pray for Carrie, as she, li as she lives with, um, with her Alzheimer's. We pray for Sherry, as she cares for her husband who has Alzheimer's. Lord, in your mercy, um, in your hands, we, Lord of mercy, in your hands, um, we put all these people for your care and your healing. In the name of Jesus, amen. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant, make me a servant, make me a servant today. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Um, so we can share the peace with those around us and also at home you can share the peace with whoever is with you. with our Thanksgiving moment and um, we had an absolutely lovely time at the Thanksgiving Eve service at St. John's Episcopal Church. It was an ecumenical experience. We look forward to being more denominations and actually more people of different religious backgrounds as we grow and expand that and build our connections here so we can be God's people together, working together in God's time and place. I want to give a special thank you to Pastor Alicia and to Jason, and also we had Laura Marquez and Manuel um, Alvarez there helping, and Marsha, thank you so much for beautiful reading. Um, but it was very fun to bring who we are and have it be partially bilingual as well. So just want a round of applause and thank you for that. And <laughs> not that he'll see it, but Father Roger from St. John's did a lovely job, so we look forward to that again. We thank you for your ongoing support for the mission and ministries of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. God is active and in working within us here, and we are so grateful that we are called to be partners with God here. So thank you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. We'll continue with a new liturgy. You may remember it from about a year ago, but we invite you to sing along the best you can or follow along in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And with you too. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to God. Give thanks to the Lord. It's good and right, right to do. truly right and proper at all times and places to give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father Almighty, ever-living God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, glory be to you. he was betrayed our Lord took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me again after supper Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this in remembrance of me and now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as our communion assistants come forward. We practice open communion. That means anyone is welcome to come and partake. And we have um, red wine, white juice, and also gluten-free crackers are available.
body of Christ is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep and unite us now and forever. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into the feast of salvation. 
Send us forth into a world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you too. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good morning, St. Mark's. It's nice to see all your smiling faces here this morning. Thank you for braving the chill and coming prepared. As you will recall, we got the blankets out. We do have blankets in the narthex, and we'll keep them out for the rest of the winter. So if you get cold during the service, send someone out to get you a blanket or a wave at an usher or something, and someone around you will get you a blanket if you decide you're too chilly. Um, that's what we have the bucket of blankets for. All right, uh, today on the little Christmas tree, you'll notice when you came in the building today, uh, there are uh, sparkly ornaments on that tree. Each sparkly ornament asks you, it's a $25 gift card for someone in the St. Mark's family who needs an extra special Christmas this year, who needs our extra support, particularly the children. So please pick up uh, a, a sticker, you do a, an ornament so we know it's been taken care of, and you do not need to register it like you did the angel tree um, because it doesn't have the same level of system going behind it. But please make sure that you, if you can afford an extra $25 for a gift for one of our children in St. Mark's um, who are in need, that would be very helpful. And <clears throat> no Bible study today, but uh, Jane has brought her traditional Christmas goodies and, and wonderful homemade goodies today for coffee hour. So please join us at Jacobson Hall for that. Uh, Christmas. Uh, poinsettia order form. I know it's an odor form, but it's an order form. Uh, order form is in the back of your bulletin. Please, if you'd like to add to the decoration of festivities for the Christmas, that'd be helpful. And uh, we do have a Christmas tree, a lovely, easy to move Christmas tree that we purchased last year. And if you would like to help set up that Christmas tree, um, we could really use the help. And Anne, where did you go, Anne? I saw Anne earlier. Anne uh, Larson, and Carl are looking for assistance with that. So if you'd like to help set up that Christmas tree, put the Christmas on it, it is, does not require the level of hauling everything up the stairs, doesn't require two trees. It's a, a relatively easy job these days. So um, please, if you have time to help in the next week, um, so we're ready and up, set up for next week. And oh, play practice today. Uh, for those of you in the Christmas play, uh, right after church today, here in the sanctuary. A council meeting that was postponed from earlier in the month. Um, we will be meeting tomorrow evening at uh, 6.30. I noticed I did not see a newsletter this morning. Uh, if it did not go out and you'd like to participate in that, uh, it will be on Zoom. The members will be in the room, but it will be available on Zoom if you'd like to uh, come in and join the, the um, council meeting tomorrow night at 6.30. <clears throat> Excuse me, next Saturday, is a landscaping work party if you'd be willing to come and help clean up around the property between 8 and 10 next Saturday morning. Um, we will be out here working on the property, moving mulch around, uh, digging up weeds, trying to keep the property under control as uh, the winter rains begin to come. Next Sunday, <clears throat> if you picked up an angel tree, an angel from the angel tree la next last week, um, please bring your wrapped, gift wrapped angel tree items back to church next Sunday 
at 9 a.m. We want the gifts available for delivery by 10 a.m. So the team will be working with sorting the gifts, making sure if there are several gifts that go to the same family, they are wrapped and packaged. If you would be available at some time in the week following or that Sunday, next Sunday, to deliver packages, we need um, delivery folks who'd be happy to go out and uh, call ahead, make an appointment with the family and drop off the gifts. And the other piece I noticed, <clears throat> uh, I, I, Ben Valu asked me last week to announce I did not get it in last week. I had too many announcements, but there's a Pearl Harbor Memorial Service on December 7th at 9 a.m., right? At 9 a.m. on the Midway. If you're interested in participating in that, uh, admission will be free. So make sure you check in with Ben and he'd love to have you join um, on that uh, Pearl Harbor Memorial Day. All right, thank you very much. We invite you to stand as you are able for our sending song. Lord, we have your peace. Lord, we have your peace. Just as you said, we have heard it. Just as you lived, we have felt it. Lord, we have your peace. Sustain us in your peace, O oh Lord, as we go to our separate worlds. Keep this peace with us as we try to love in a troubled world. Send us forth in peace. Send us forth in peace to be a light, to show your beauty. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God. <laughs>